Today, I have for you 15 mind-blowing vegan food hacks that will aid you in your weight loss journey. And make sure you stick around until the end because I have a crazy story about one of these last vegan food hacks. Hack number one is to make your own oil-free vegan butter. Yes, it's pretty much impossible to buy oil-free vegan butter at the grocery store, so we just make our own out of cashews. You'll start by adding two cups of raw cashews to your high-speed blender. They're supposed to be raw, and yes, these are roasted, but it's all I had on hand. A friend gave them to me, so I gotta use them up. Cashews are also known as the vegan cow because of how many dairy-based things you can actually make with them and make them vegan, including butter. After adding two cups of raw cashews, you'll add a half a cup of water to your blender, then four tablespoons of nutritional yeast. That just added 16 grams of protein. Pretty impressive, right? Then you'll add a teaspoon of salt, and the next is two tablespoons tablespoons of lemon juice. Oh, I'm so strong with one arm. Woo! <laughs> right here is one and two, which is depending on the size of your lemon, about half of a lemon. I'll just squeeze the rest out. Okay, then all we do is blend this together. I forgot to mention, it's much easier to blend if you actually soak your cashews beforehand. Luckily, I have a Vitamix, so it's working, but make sure to soak your cashews first. Here it is. It kind of looks like peanut butter, but if you're better at following directions than I am and actually use raw cashews, it won't be so peanut buttery. I got these molds on Amazon. They're great for granola bars as well as for butter. So you'll just add the mixture to the mold so it has a nice shape. You can skip this process if you would rather just keep it in a jar and then use as needed on top of toast. So this makes about five vegan butter sticks. I'm gonna put this in the fridge to set for at least one hour, and then you'll also store it in the fridge as well. Once the butter has set, this stuff is amazing on toast or anything that you want a little bit of savory, creamy goodness. Is that peanut butter? No, it's not peanut butter. You. It's regular butter. Wanna try it? It's salty. You like it? Mm-hmm. It's good. It's really good. Now, while this butter is delicious, I would not bake with it. And that's why I've got for you hack number two, and that is to swap out butter for avocados when you're baking. Let's make some cookies so I can show you how easy this is done. You'll take one ripe avocado and then you'll add it to your mixing bowl. So one full ripe avocado. Then you'll add a fourth a cup of regular sugar and a half a cup of brown sugar. Here is an extra bonus hack for you today. I'm actually out of brown sugar. So I'm gonna add a half a cup of regular sugar and I happen to have blackstrap molasses in my house on hand for these occasions. And all you do is add a tablespoon of blackstrap molasses to your regular sugar to get that dark brown sugar taste. And then we'll also add a teaspoon of vanilla and we'll mix everything together. Now we'll add a cup and a half of just regular all-purpose flour. You can also use whole wheat pastry flour. The only unfortunate thing about these avocado cookies is that they have a slight green color, so you just hide that with a fourth a cup of some cocoa powder. And then everything will be brown and beautiful. Then we'll add a half a teaspoon of baking soda and a fourth a teaspoon of salt. All right, now let's mix everything. Now, if the mixture looks a little dry, you'll add in about a tablespoon of milk at a time and mix it up to see if that can help form the dough a little bit better because each avocado is different, each size varies, so you may need a little bit of extra liquid. I just use soy milk. Mine's still a little bit dry, so I'm gonna add a second tablespoon of soy milk, and that's perfect. It has that dough texture, that cookie texture. It's great. Lastly, you'll fold in a half a cup of vegan chocolate chips. You'll set your oven to 350, and then we'll just scoop up those cookies. When you're thinking about weight loss, you're definitely not thinking about cookies. But the simple thing of swapping out your butter for avocado can save you anywhere between 20 to 40 calories per cookie and two to four grams of fat. And especially considering that that's saving you the saturated fat, which tends to affect clogged arteries more than healthy fat found in avocados. It's a simple swap when you need a sweet that makes a big difference. This makes a good amount of cookies too. Now these cookies will not melt down like typical cookies would with regular butter, so you do kinda need to smash them to the size and shape that you want. There are some avocado bits that didn't get mashed very well because my avocado was pretty unripe. 
but that's okay. And then you can add some chocolate chips on top just to make it look good. All right, let's put them in the oven. These will bake at 350 for 10 to 12 minutes. All right, cookies are done. Look at how good these babies look. Oh my goodness. So yummy. So yummy, look at that. My kids are gonna be so happy to see these when they get home. They are cookies. Ah, can I have another one? Yeah. <laughs> All right, best part of making videos, taste testing cookies. Mm. They're dense, they're rich, they're soft, they're yummy. Say you're not really a sweet person, you're more of a salty snack type of person. Well, that leads me to hack number three, and that is to use nutritional yeast and apple cider vinegar on your popcorn. I love using an air popper, and I got mine on Amazon. It's actually pretty inexpensive too. You'll just turn it on. Now for my kids, I use olive oil and I'll just spray olive oil with some salt. But for me, I like to take a little spray bottle, wherever you can find, I found this in the dollar section at Target, wash it out, and then you'll add in some apple cider vinegar into it. I learned this trick from Dr. Greger. I didn't come up with it, but I love the tang. So the tang of the apple cider vinegar is so great. Plus, it makes it sticky, so that then you can add some nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast has a surprising amount of protein. So you can add that protein to this nice little salty snack. Now I still need salt after this. This isn't enough for me. So I will add regular salt. Usually I'll add light salt, but sometimes this can have a little bit of an aftertaste. So if you're picky, you can just do a dash, just a little bit of regular salt, just to bring out the flavor of the nutritional yeast. Mmm. Mm, so good. I literally could snack on this all day. I really like the taste of nutritional yeast. My mom used to put this on popcorn years ago and it just brings back good memories. Because I didn't use any oil or butter, this entire huge bowl of popcorn is under 200 calories, which makes for it the perfect weight loss snack. Or like literally can't stop eating it. <laughs> so good. Hack number four is in your typical vegan fried rice recipe. Just use half riced cauliflower and half regular rice. You honestly can't tell the difference. With the texture of the tofu and the veggies and the rice, it's an easy swap that will reduce your calories and increase the nutrition. Let me show you how. It starts with turning on to medium high heat. We're just gonna crumble some of that package of firm tofu. This will be our eggs. Egg-like texture, but Tofu actually has more protein than eggs. Perfect. And we will flavor that with a, about a fourth of a teaspoon of turmeric. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, a half of a teaspoon of salt, and then a dash of black pepper so that your body can more easily absorb that turmeric. Mix everything together really well. Okay, we're gonna turn off the heat and then add this mixture, this tofu scramble mixture. Add it to a bowl and set it aside. Next, we will water saute an onion. So we're gonna turn that heat back on and then I already added some water to this and we'll water saute it in the pan. Clean off the pan while we're at it. <laughs> then we'll add four cloves garlic. And here is the trick. So we'll add two cups cooked and cooled rice. So it's one, and let's get the other one out. Two, so here's my rice. Now let's add two cups of rice cauliflower. It's gonna be frozen, just from a bag. So we'll add two cups frozen rice cauliflower to this. One, two. Then we'll add a bag of frozen veggies. It's a 14 ounce bag, so it's gonna be half of my huge bag. And then we need the flavor with four to five tablespoons of soy sauce. Again, it's about a tablespoon per cup of rice or rice cauliflower. And then if you like it a little bit more salty, you can add that fifth tablespoon. It's up to you and your taste preferences. An extra hack is an eighth of a cup is actually two tablespoons. This is an eighth of a cup, just two tablespoons. So that's four. I'm gonna throw in my fifth right here just to fill up half of this. I like it with a little bit more flavor. There we go. Super easy, super delicious. And then we'll add in that tofu. Now let's add in the tofu and we'll just fold it in. Otherwise the tofu can get pretty mushy if you mix it in too much. And dinner is served. You can garnish with the green onions. Look at this. You would never know that half of that is not actually rice and that it's riced cauliflower instead. It tastes just as great. It honestly has the same texture because of all of the things going on in this dish. And it's significantly less in calories. That's why we do it. Plus so many more nutrients with the rice cauliflower. A super easy swap, a great hack. My kids won't even know that half of this is rice cauliflower.
Another cool thing you can do with cauliflower is add it to your mashed potatoes, which leads me to hack number five. Make half cauliflower, half mashed potatoes. No one will tell the difference. I previously cooked my potatoes and a head of cauliflower in the Instant Pot. Now this cauliflower is gonna pretty much fall apart because it was cooked in the Instant Pot, but that's okay. We're gonna add it to a food processor with about three cups of potatoes. I'm pretty much just gonna fill this whole thing up. One more little one. There we go, perfect. I still have more potatoes left over, but I'll use these for another recipe. Now you have to be careful not to over process potatoes because they turn kind of gummy. So we'll just chop these up. There we go. Another potato. Perfect. Again, don't over process these. The texture is perfect, but now we need the flavor. To the mixture, we will add one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of rosemary, one teaspoon of thyme, and then one teaspoon of bouillon. That's where the salt flavor kind of comes from. It's also gonna help to mask the flavor of the cauliflower. I'm gonna use my food processor, again, being careful not to over process, just to mix everything. There we go, and then taste it. I actually told you not to overprocess it like five times and then I overprocessed it. So I'm adding my other potatoes to help fix the texture, which means also double the spices, but this will still work great. So when you make it, mash the potatoes by hand. Don't put them in the food processor, but feel free to process the cauliflower with all the spices and then put it in a bowl with the mashed potatoes and you'll get more of a texture like this, much better. So it happens I'm trying to save time. I have to take my daughter to soccer and just three minutes. Mom? Yeah? You ready to go? Want to know what I eat for breakfast every day? Oatmeal, but not your typical oatmeal. It is oatmeal topped with frozen riced cauliflower along with frozen blueberries. I know it may sound a little crazy, but it actually tastes super yummy, kind of like a frozen smoothie. It's so good, like a frozen frosty goodness. I like that it's cold. I don't microwave the rice cauliflower. So I just take some old fashioned oats and I kind of eyeball how much I add to my bowl. Not a ton, not too little, probably about half a cup maybe. Then I add just enough water to kind of cover it. See, it's not drowning in water, just enough to cover everything. And then I place it in the microwave for one minute. All right, it's been one minute. And then we'll add the toppings. We'll start with just about a teaspoon, half a tablespoon of some peanut butter, a dash of maple syrup, about the same amount, depending on how much sweetness you like. And I'll add some cinnamon. And it's those three things that make this so you can't even taste the cauliflower. I also really like my oatmeal nice and creamy. So I add about a half a cup of soy milk and then mix everything together. These are frozen. So the rice cauliflower is totally frozen and these blue blueberries are frozen. I'll grab a handful of blueberries. Totally turns my hand purple, I'll wash them after. And then I'll add the second half with the rice cauliflower. Then we'll top it, I just have some pepitas. So just add a little bit more crunch. And it is so good, I love that it's all frozen. Now let's mix everything together. And it's just this beautiful frozen deliciousness. It's so yummy. Now you can mix up the toppings instead of peanut butter, maple syrup, you can do your favorite plant-based protein powder for added flavor. Sometimes I'll do that too. And it's yummy and chocolatey or vanilla-y. The breakfast of champions right here. No joke, so good, so full of all this goodness. And it tastes really yummy. Mm. It's so good. Way better than my bowl of cereal growing up, but just as like cold and refreshing. Hack number seven is to swap out your coconut milk. Instead of using canned coconut milk, use boxed coconut milk. Boxed coconut milk, usually found in the actual milk aisle, saves a ton of calories and fat. It may not be as creamy, but it still has that delicious flavor. Here's another cool way to swap out your coconut milk. Buy some coconut extract. This carries so much coconut flavor, and you can even use this extract with regular soy milk in your recipe, and you'll get that coconut flavor with the added calories and creaminess that soy milk can bring, still saving you tons of saturated fat and calories. Hey, real quick, have you downloaded my free one-week vegan meal guide? It's super yummy, and it's full of whole food plant-based recipes 
recipes. All you need to do is click on the link below and I will send it right to your email. Hack number eight is to make homemade potato chips in your air fryer. They taste like the real deal. Super crunchy and yummy. Let me show you how to make them. You just need to wash your potato and grab either a peeler or a mandolin if you have a mandolin. I happen to have a mandolin, which came with another chopper that I bought. So you'll just slice it over. Be very careful with your fingers as it gets closer. You can bite gloves for this. I actually have. To protect your fingers, you can use one of these things. And there we go. And then you have nice, thin slices. That's the goal, is you want them really thin. So if you're just using a peeler, that works too. We'll soak these in ice water anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes. Just make sure that the ice is still there and doesn't melt. You can even soak these overnight. You just want the potatoes nice and covered. This is going to remove the excess starch and help them become more crispy when we bake them in the air fryer. After these little slices have soaked for about 30 minutes, we want to dry them completely. This is key. Just on a paper towel. Woo cold water. All right, let's now salt them. Now you can add whatever herbs you want. You can add dill to this. You can add some, any flavor that you want, honestly. I'm just gonna stick with salt. Perfect, let's put these in the air fryer. I cook them a little higher at 400. Some people will say 360, 375. And then we'll do it for 10 minutes, but we need to flip them over halfway. And then we may need a few minutes after that. All right, time to flip. So we'll just flip them over, move some of the ones getting crispy more towards the middle. All right, and then I'll probably check them again in another five minutes. Okay, it has been 14 minutes, and here we go. Perfect potato chips. Okay, here we go, taste test. Mmm, nice. They're good. I'm down here. Can I have another one? Yeah, you can have another one. Mm. They're crispy. They're awesome. Mm. Yeah, they're good, huh? Can I have your phone now? <laughs> you want my phone? Yeah. Look at these. This one wants to be in here so bad. There we go. Yummy. So an even better idea than using the air fryer is to use the microwave to make potato chips. So we're gonna show you how to do that right now. Just like in the air fryer, you'll use the mandolin to make the slices. Just be careful with those fingers. You'll soak these slices in cold water for up to 30 minutes, but if you're in a hurry, you can just soak them for a couple of minutes. Then you'll place them on a paper towel, dry them off. Like I did. <laughs> just like you're my little helper here. After they're dried off, you'll put them on a plate and then use your salt to salt them. We'll put them in the microwave for five minutes. That's it. Once they come out, you get these delicious chips. They are amazing. If you are one to buy a lot of dried beans, buy them from the Dollar Tree. They are so much cheaper at the dollar store than they are at your regular grocery store. Sometimes even twice as expensive from just your grocery store. So save up and buy them at the dollar store. And while you're at the dollar store, that leads me to hack number 10, and that is to stock up on canned fruit at the dollar store. This is also so much cheaper from the Dollar Tree than it is at your regular grocery store. I mean, of course, this all depends on what your regular grocery store offers but for me in my typical grocery store it's so much cheaper to buy canned fruit from the Dollar Tree than it is at my grocery store so grab it while you're there you can grab canned peaches or canned pineapple for a yummy weight loss snack and save some money while you're at it and for hack number 11 while you're at the dollar store also grab some dried edamame everyone talks about adding more protein to your diet to help you in weight loss and they sell all of these protein bars that are super expensive but honestly dried edamame for only a hundred 140 calories has 14 grams of protein. Tons of protein for, I would say, an eighth of the cost of a protein bar. So ditch the vegan protein bars and grab some dried edamame instead. Hack number 12 is to curb your chocolate cravings with some homemade green juice. I know I always crave chocolate when I want something sweet and need a little bit of a pick-me-up. And that caffeine in chocolate usually does the trick. But green juice is so much better for you and will also give you that sweet little treat with a wonderful pick-me-up. Let me show you how to make it. There is no exact recipe to this. I eyeball it, so don't get mad at me. You will place a huge handful of spinach in your blender. So this is about halfway of spinach. Then you'll add one stalk of celery and about a third of a pineapple. So I've chopped up about a third of a pineapple. You can use frozen pineapple, which actually makes this taste even better. And then the secret to making it taste so good is orange juice. Here's the cool thing about orange juice is when it has calcium in it, your body can more easily absorb the calcium from orange juice than even from soy milk or almond milk because of the vitamin C. You want about a third of the can of the concentrate. So this one will make 
three green juices at some point. Put the lid back on, put it in the freezer. Then you'll fill about half of your blender with water, so just until it's about halfway up there, and then we'll blend it. All right, now we will take our green juice mixture and put it into a jar to put in the fridge to save for whenever we have those chocolate cravings. And you'll just take a sip at a time. This will last anywhere between three days to even up to seven days, depending. All of those air bubbles will disappear over time. It's sweet, it's yummy, and the greens really do energize me just like chocolate does. It hits the spot and it's a great swap. Before you drink it, you may need to shake it up a little bit if it sat in the fridge for a while. But what I love about this is it's better than a smoothie because it's mostly water, so it doesn't get too gross over time. And if you want it to be a little bit sweeter, if it's not sweet enough for you, all you need to do is add a little bit more frozen orange juice concentrate or add more pineapple. Adjust this to your taste preferences. I like the littlest bit of sweetness, not too sweet, but just enough that it hits the spot. It really is so good. Hack number 13 is to make a chickpea flour omelet. Because chickpea flour is higher in protein than eggs. So you'll actually have a higher protein breakfast with chickpea flour omelets than you would with regular omelets. You will need some chickpea flour. Now, if you don't already have chickpea flour, it's easy to make. You just take a bag of dried garbanzo beans and then put them in your high-speed blender. So you can make that into flour. And that's what I did with half of that bag. You will add one and a half cups of that chickpea flour, two tablespoons of flaxseed, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, then a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of turmeric, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Mix well, and then we'll add a cup and a half of water. Whisk it really well, getting all those lumps out. You can make these as big or as small as you would like. Once you see those bubbles, you'll want to start to flip them over. Okay, so now let's put everything together. You'll top your omelets with some avocados, tomatoes, and of course you can choose whatever you want to put on top. I have some green onions and some broccoli sprouts. And then what I think what makes it so good is a little bit of some hot sauce. Let's put on some Frank's hot sauce here. I am so hungry and so excited to eat this. It's so savory. It's kind of a little confusing if you are expecting the taste of a pancake because it's definitely more savory than that. The toppings make it so good. Hack number 14 is where my crazy story comes to play. As a mom of six kids, I'm often pretty tired, so I like to take naps. And one day, when I woke up from my nap, I remembered this dream I had about making a salad dressing from a sweet potato. This didn't feel like a typical dream. It felt like an inspired dream. So I decided to take it seriously and immediately looked up different recipes for salad dressing made from sweet potato. And turns out it's been done before and it's super delicious. So this recipe is a result of my nap time dream. You'll take a sweet potato and put it in the microwave for six minutes. Potato is done. We'll take that out, make sure it's not too hot. We'll open the potato and then we'll just scoop out the center and add it to a blender. I'll add two tablespoons of tahini to the dressing, two tablespoons apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon Dijon mustard, one clove of minced garlic, and a fourth a teaspoon of turmeric, just a little pinch. We'll add some pepper to help the absorption rate of the turmeric, and we'll start with half of a teaspoon of salt and then add more as needed to your taste preference. You need to balance out all of the apple cider vinegar with a little bit of sweetness, so you'll want to make sure to add a tablespoon of maple syrup as well. If you like it more sweet, you can add more, but a tablespoon should do it. We'll add three fourths cup of water to finish this off. Now let's mix it up. You'll want to open it up, scrape down the sides. Oh, this looks awesome. Perfect, look at that goodness, that dressing yumminess. So creamy. I bought these containers off of Amazon and they are perfect for homemade dressings. So just open up the container, put in your dressing so you can easily put it on your salad. Seriously, I'm so impressed how potatoes make for the perfect creaminess in salad dressing. It's a pretty cool dream I had. I would not have come up with this on my own. Not the pretty salad, it's delicious. Feel free to make this salad dressing your own. You can add more maple syrup to it. You can add more salt, more pepper, some fresh herbs, but this is a great base and it's delicious.
It's a good one. Creamy, yummy, vinegary. Glad I had a dream about it. Like I think I'm never gonna go back to using anything other than potatoes for salad dressings, for reals. And hack number 15, since we made a sweet potato dressing, we might as well make a white potato dressing. Here's that recipe. You'll actually want to peel your potato before you cook it. The skin is not as thick as the sweet potato, so it's easier if you peel it beforehand. Then you'll place it in the microwave for five minutes. All right, potato is done. We'll put it right into the blender. This recipe is super similar to the sweet potato recipe. You'll start with two tablespoons of tahini, then you'll add two tablespoons of lemon juice, which is about the juice of half of a large lemon. And then this time it's just one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, one clove of garlic minced, and I'm using just the pre-minced kind, a half a teaspoon of salt, I use light salt, a dash of pepper, a tablespoon of maple syrup. You can use less if you want this to be a little bit more savory. We just need to balance out that acid a little bit with some sweetness. And I find a tablespoon is perfect. Then it's a half a cup of water. We'll mix this up and then add some dill and parsley after it's blended. Now that it's blended and beautiful and creamy, we'll add about a half a teaspoon of dill. You can add chives too if you have any dried chives on hand. I do not. And then a half a teaspoon of parsley. We'll just quickly mix that together. And there we have it. You wanna mix down the edges. Seriously, look at this creamy, delicious dressing. It, this is amazing. This is like the best hack of all time. And it tastes so good. You can thin this out with a little bit more water. I mean, it obviously all depends on how big your potato was, on how thick or thin this is. Feel free to adjust the recipe as needed. Not gonna lie, this stuff is better than my tofu-based ranch dressing. It's super yummy. Give it a try. Once you go potato-based salad dressings, you may never go back. Plus, you can use a lot of this guilt-free. Pile it on, baby, pile it on. It's like eating a potato salad. <laughs> if you like these vegan food hacks, I know you'll love my other vegan food hack videos. So make sure to check them out too.